Too bad that this guy isn't doing any remixes or songs for the time being. Lucky one, better known as uh, Der Schlingel, who has been driving uh, today actually as well. But either way, I hope that we can finally start this race. 
Um, just checking the other auger stuff. Okay, so and either way, I started now. <laughs> I started now. Um, let's go to the spectate mode. Let me show you all the stuff we need to see. And also offer you something. Like this? And I hope it's right because it doesn't look like stuff. In lobby B, Nitro boost leads the field away. Vulcan in P2. Pineapple boy P3. Meanwhile, in lobby A. AC's leading, you know, is in P2. Widow P3, Pokchavian in P4. Tim Q in P5. Kaizi in P6 has already got himself a time penalty. Johnny in P7 leading the GT field. If Gabadi right behind him. Ferrari Pro for Nova. East for VNT Pantera Racing. TFSI or WSR Racing. On for user for RRC and Atom Gren for the Spider GT Lexus. Atomgren already trying to pass Confi. But Confi stays ahead. Let us check the field. In all the different positions, Octavian is closely behind Widow. Casey's already leading away. Trying to go on the outside on you know. And the capital hypercar goes past. You know driving for GT Finland races is already trying for the counter attack out of Indianapolis and actually makes the move stick. Goes past, resecures P2. So they are currently in P2 as well in the overall standings but widow goes on the inside and makes the move stick this time octavian right behind there has the best tickets for racing action to look at them and he might also go for an attack in a couple of minutes or just trying to drive safely and get the car to the finish but as tim q who got himself a half a second penalty might be 
trying to get past the DLL car because they only have a gap to each other of 9 seconds provisionally. So RRC could get the position of DLL as well. Kaizi. Finally, I must say. Uh, happy Tree Friends Racing by International Racing Crew and Bonsai Racing. Finally in Lobby A. Great to see that livery once again. And looking at the GT field, Johnny and Gobadi are already working on uh, getting away from all the other GT cars. Johnny leading while Gobadi is closely behind him. Ferrari Pro pulling away from Yis Gitte as well. Atom Gren already passed. TFSI and Confi, who are also battling each other. AC is pulling away. Octavian goes for an attack and goes past Yuno. That might be crucial for him since uh, he wants to have a gap to the RRC hypercar. But we know that uh, Yuno is driving for GT Finland races and they have been managing their battery throughout the race very, very good. So you know, of course, gonna play the long game and just trying to maybe secure P2 because I don't think that they're gonna um, get the gap of nearly three and a half minutes to the Scuderia Velo Velo Cheetah car. Now driven by Casey, Octavian, you know, and Tim sending it into Indianapolis. Octavian has the inside line. Let's hope that the rear of the car is going to be stable. And it isn't. Octavian goes past once again. You know, goes for a counter attack over the inside. And makes a move stick. Octavian now had the better exit. But is he able to make the move stick? Goes for the inside once again. Very close and fair racing by these two. And Pactavian goes past Yuno once more. MQ nearly sending the car and the Porsche goes into the wall. And Kaizi staying right behind there. Pactavian now able to get myself a, a little bit of a gap to Yuno. Maybe Yuno you know, is already starting to manage more hybrid than the others. And as long as he's in a slipstream, it might be good for him. Meanwhile, Johnny still has AFK body very, very closely behind him. What? Your body isn't really able to close the gap only still leading still looking solid East GT and Atom Gren are now fighting as well. Spider GT Lexus trying to get the best out of it because I also think that they underperformed heavily. Especially after the first stint.
Sometimes he lost a little bit of time. Went off the curb there. This might be a time penalty, but it seems like you're lucky there. I think that the Lambo is now gonna save some fuel and uh, just manage the car into the finish line. Octavian gained himself a time penalty. Tim Q as well, and you know, has been passed by Tim Q as well. Very good exit from Efkabadi out of the first Mulsanne chicane. Stay in the slipstream, so he is saving heavily. It looks like that Tim Q might have also gotten a penalty somewhere else because he has lost a lot of time compared to what Octavian lost. Both had a time penalty. Defending against Tim Q and Kaizi is closing in. Now he's got a half second penalty. And AC is smashing. Three minute 18.933 in the third lap of the last stint. He really wants to secure. He really wants to secure that win for Scuderia Vedo Vedo Cheetah. Javian able to secure P3 for the moment. You know... Staying ahead of... Tim Q now pulls to the outside line. Goes for another shot and goes actually past. Now into the Indianapolis section, as you can see, very tricky to go in there. Breaks before the corner. Gives the car a little bit of throttle to stabilize it throughout the corner. And then heavily breaks again. And nobody still being behind John Hunaya got half a second penalty. He will need to serve that one.
one fee, one second penalty. Going into Indianapolis. Will serve the penalty too. Up time wise, he really is dropping off, but as you can see, with all the others having fuel management, he is quite managing heavily. So he's going to try and undercut everyone. Not undercut everyone, to outstop everyone, excuse me. Vardy after the surf penalty, 1.2 seconds behind Johnny and not 1.2, 1 seconds and Ferrari Bros, 1.2 seconds behind. Been a long night. Didn't get much sleep, nearly none. But I must say that even though we had a massive delay, even though we had multiple disconnects, documentation issues, and maybe some organizational stuff that hasn't been managed pretty well, I do think so far that everyone expected worse from having a 24 hour race with two lobbies at the same time making this a 30 grid or 30 car grid race instead of a 14 car grid race giving all the drivers the possibility to promote from lobby B to lobby A or even get relegated from lobby A to lobby B to always have battles like this fortunately influenced by disconnects spins crashes all types of incidents lappings as well i do think that everything was expected way worse than it was now now that i have jinxed it the only thing missing is a lobby crash <laughs> so you just wait for that until this happens <laughs> to red flag the race once again. <laughs> ah. But. Um, I'm quite interested. To know what you guys think about. Um, all in all. Maybe about the series. What do you think of. Uh, the organizational stuff. What do you think of a livery contest. Where, which I will uh, give you the links for once again. So that you can. Uh, vote for your four favorite liveries per class once again give all the livery designers the credit they deserve Just stuff like this shouldn't be granted and all the amount of work that people put into the liveries um, show their creativity is very interesting and We've just seen that Gobadi now has gone past Johnny. A little bit of contact from Johnny through Indianapolis. Who now tries to stay behind him. Maybe save a little bit of fuel to adjust his strategy as well. Oh, Johnny's got a half a second penalty that he had to serve. Went off the racing line. That was very good. And Ferrari Pro now behind him as well. Trying to catch up. Good as by the GT hypercar, a hypercar to the Lamborghini, but mainly driving as fast as a hypercar. <laughs> Kabadi not really improving his lap time, even though he's managing fuel as well, tires too. The so journey now is being. Hunted by the Nova Lexus driven by F1 Ferrari Pro. Meanwhile, we can take a look to the field again. Casey, nine seconds ahead of Widow, smashing these lap times 318.9, 319.1, 319.2. 
if he catches or he, if he if he stays in this race pace wow these lap times are gonna pay his uh, student debt widow also having very solid lap times always been in the low 20s it's now five and a half seconds ahead of Poctavian who is finding the rhythm himself. And securing P3 in the meantime. But as you can see, hybrid management for the cars is interesting as well. AC using most of the hybrid already. Widow is saving and then still having these kind of lap times. That's really impressive. Octavian also using his battery pretty heavily, I would say. MQ is saving as well. Kaizi using his battery heavily as well. Check if no one got a penalty. That's not the case. And you know, saving the battery, I'd say the best. And I hope this will pay off at the end again because it seemed like it worked throughout the whole race. So why shouldn't it work now? Body half a second penalty. Last lap was on three fifty three point one. He is really trying to get that Lambo through the Muzan chicane to get the maximum out of it. Johnny trying to stay behind him, and Ferrari Pro closing in as well. Now Tim Grenn, half a second penalty for the Spider GT Lexus driver. Excuse me, something went wrong. Johnny re-overtaking body after he had to serve his penalty. This Ferrari Pro actually gone through as well. body closed the line early, said no, you're not going past me. Stay behind. And now we'll try to close in as well Even now passing the GT cars. Johnny had a mistake. I don't know where, I don't know when. I haven't seen it. Excuse me. But he's got nearly five seconds. We got body four seconds to Ferrari Pro. And nearly got hit by the RRC hypercar. Only got reset on track. Did he get shunt off? That would be typical.
Gunny now. He's pushing. I'm to steer assist. Can quickly take a look at what is happening in the other lobby. The leading GT cars are fighting as well. With the Spider GT, BMW, fighting against the Dio and Lexus. Agebo, schönen guten Tag. Ich denke mal, du möchtest ein bestimmtes Auto sehen. Und warte. Diesen Gefallen tue ich dir jetzt auch. Schau mal. Hau dir das mal an. Ist das nicht schön? Ist das nicht schön? <lacht> Übrigens, ich mal ganz kurz auf die deutsche Sprache zurück. Ähm, an der Stelle möchte ich nochmal auf den Lackierwettbewerb aufmerksam machen. Da könnt ihr alle gerne einmal in die Tasten hämmern. Und ey! Da hat ein Alert funktioniert. Welch ein Wunder. Welch ein Wunder. Hallo Gammeltos, schön, dass du auch wieder da bist. Da kommen jetzt, da kommen jetzt die, die Alerts alle rein. Ah, da waren sie kurz alle motiviert. Haben sie gedacht, dass die Alerts alle funktionieren? Gar nicht tun sie. <lacht> Hier passiert gar nichts. Muss man mal nachher angucken, was das Problem ist. Ich kann mir vorstellen, was das sein könnte. Könnte wieder ein typischer Windows 11 Bug sein. Windows 11 ist Käse, wissen wir alle. Ähm, müsste ich mich mal ransetzen, mal nachgucken. Aber ich denke, für zu Kuba sollte das wieder in Ordnung sein. Übrigens, falls ihr es noch nicht wusstet, am 10.8. haben wir ein 9 Stunden Rennen mit Gruppe 4 Fahrzeugen in Zukuba mit der Standard GT BOP und keinen Setups. Das bedeutet, falls ihr eventuell wollt, und das auch nur eventuell, und das über neun Stunden lang, in einem ganz kleinen Kreis zu fahren, mit Gruppe 4 Fahrzeugen, in einem Einsteigen-Losfahren-Prinzip, 
Ähm, ihr wisst, auf welchem Kanal ihr gerade unterwegs seid. Ihr wisst, worüber alles gemanagt wird. Richtig, über Discord. Da habt ihr hier einmal den Link. Da einmal rauf gehen, da einmal dazu kommen. Und als es irgendwas gibt, was ihr wissen wollt, wissen müsst oder auch Hilfe braucht. Für jederzeit ist Hilfe gesorgt. Und äh, da gibt es noch ein paar andere Rennen, die vielleicht interessant sein könnten. Anfang Oktober, 24 Stunden Rennen der Nordschleife. Mit Gruppe 3 und Gruppe 4 Fahrzeugen. Auch ohne Setups und der reinen GT BOP. Also einsteigen, losfahren. An 24er Daytona. Im Dezember. WC Serie, selbes Format wie hier. Vielleicht ist Dragon Trail noch für euch interessant. Im November, 6 Stunden, Gruppe 3, ohne BOP und ohne Setups. Oder selbes Format, wie das wir jetzt was sehen. Entweder ein Fuji oder ein Interlagos. Auch jeweils im äh, August und Oktober. Oder September. Könnte auch September sein. Bin mir gar nicht sicher. Müsste ich mal nachgucken. Ich gucke ihn. Ich sage ihn. Und ein Moment. Ja, jetzt habt ihr auch die genauen Daten. Also. 10.8. 9 Stunden zu Kuba. 8.9. 6 Stunden in Talagos. 5.10. 24 Stunden Nordschleife. 8.5. Äh. 26.10. 8 Stunden Fuji. Mit 8.5. wollte ich 8 Stunden Fuji sagen. Ähm, 16.11. 6 Stunden Dragon Trail Seaside. Also Küste. Und am 14.12. 24 Stunden Rennen von Daytona. Wenn er mit dabei sein möchte, kommt einfach auf den Discord. Da wird euch relativ schnell ähm, eine Zuordnung passieren. Das bedeutet, entweder ihr bringt euer eigenes Team mit, dann erstellen wir für euch einen neuen Teamkanal, eine neue Rolle. Ähm, wir bräuchten für jedes Team einen Ansprechpartner, das ist dann die sogenannte Admin. Ähm, wobei das eventuell noch umbenannt wird. Müssen wir mal sehen. Ähm, auf jeden Fall kommt ihr ran. Funktioniert dann ganz einfach. Sowohl mit der Anmeldung als auch mit dem Teilnehmen. Ähm, dann schauen wir mal. Und eine Sache möchte ich für den nächsten Monat, für den 10.8. vorhalten. Wenn ich den Alfa Romeo, nicht den 4C, sondern den anderen Alfa Romeo, den alten. Wenn ich Nissan Silvia, wenn ich den Bugatti und ich mindestens ein Fahrzeug sehe, was mit Frontantrieb unterwegs ist, ob Shiroko, TT, Mazda 3 oder sonst was. Dann kracht's. Es gibt einen, der Bugatti fahren möchte. Ob das aber nach dem Physics-Update immer noch so sein wird, weiß ich nicht. <lacht> aber... Ich kann euch garantieren, zu Kuba wird unfassbar lustig. Weil... Wo oh, willst du da überholen? Vor allem mit Gruppe 4. An einem Langstrecken. Wo oh, willst du da vorbei? Kannst da auch. Das wird ein offener Schlagabtausch. Frage ich euch, wo war ich denn so? Also war ich auch hier stehe. Oder liege. Wir sollten aber auch vielleicht mal langsam zum Renngeschehen zurückkommen. Auf jeden Fall, AC Werner Box hatte eine halbe Sekunde Zeitstrafe, ist aktuell auf Platz 6 unterwegs. Er hat kürzere Stints als äh, die anderen. Das heißt, Casey könnte für einen Boxenstopp mehr gehen. TFSI auf der 13, Johnny auf 12. Ansonsten haben wir noch Ame Gubadi, Atom Grin, beide bleiben draußen. 
Yiskit geht rein. Konfi, der fährt noch ein bisschen. Da, ah, Ipro fährt auch noch ein bisschen, obwohl er in der Box war. Johnny hat mittlerweile 10 Sekunden auf Ferrari Pro. Das ist viel. Da sehen wir auch, dass er da in Runde 6 äh, diesen gravierenden Fehler hat, wo er, meine ich, zurückgesetzt wurde. Noch in der Box. Ich habe ja sowieso eine Mückenphobie. Was für eine Phobie? Die Mücken liegen, lieben mich. Äh, aber. <lacht> Die Dinger zerstechen mich an Stellen. Das ist am Fußgelenk, an der Schulter auf den Arm. Das ist schlimm. Einhören ist schlimm. So, Widow jetzt auch in der Box. Der, äh, genauso wie Tim Q. Octavian fährt noch ein Rödchen. Hat genauso viel Sprit wie Tim Q. Das wird eng. Aber Octavian hat sich für längeres jetzt entschieden. Bruno batteriemäßig sehen wir. Sie schnappt sich die Führung zurück. Obadi wird jetzt reinkommen. Atem Grin genauso. Und wie halbe Sekunde Zeitstrafe. 3 Pro immer noch 10 Sekunden vor Johnny. Und die müsste mal die Handschuhe tauschen. Den schon benutzt aus. Ähm. Lustig. Gut geschlafen. Nö. Habe kaum geschlafen, aber ich habe es versucht. Da ist man einmal weg. <lacht> Der ganze Laden kracht. <lacht> ah, es ist, es ist schön. Aber ich glaube, nichtsdestotrotz, bislang äh, haben wir alle mit einem schlimmeren Ergebnis gerechnet. Ähm, dass ein Delay kommen wird, ähm, dass nicht jeder sofort seine Gap eintragen wird, dass manche es verpennen, dass äh, Stints verschlafen werden, dass dann welche nicht dazukommen, dass dann Fahrzeuge zurückgezogen werden, bla 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 bla. Ähm, damit war zu rechnen, das ist auch in gewisser Weise normal. Aber ich finde, wenn man zum ersten Mal mit frischer Orga, mit frischer Stintplanung, mit äh, einem riesen Event wie im 24er, wie in Le Mans, wo sich 35 Leute anmelden und am Ende noch sieben rausgehen durch. Wir können keine Fahrer stellen, wir melden uns nicht zurück, wir antworten mit Skibit die Toilet, wenn wir dreimal nicht auf irgendwelche Sachen reagieren ähm, und du solche Idioten hast. Ähm, ich finde trotzdem, 
dass man mit diesem 29k Grid, woraus jetzt nur noch 26 geworden sind, dass man trotzdem etwas auf die Beine gestellt hat, was funktioniert. Ja, es steht jetzt noch zumindest für die Orga, für Leute wie Nuschel, Bonfi, für dich Stick, für alle anderen, die irgendwie in diesem Rennen Organisation involviert sind, steht jetzt noch ein bisschen Arbeit an und zwar die richtigen Abstände, dann alles zusammenzählen. Ähm, da steht jetzt noch ein bisschen was an. Das ist richtig. Das, das ist richtig, ja. Und das wird vielleicht noch interessant, was Stewarding angeht. Vielleicht kommen da noch ein paar Zwischenfälle, vielleicht nicht. Ähm ich finde aber, man muss sagen, dass das geklappt hat. Und dass das bei weitem hätte schlimmer werden können. Ich habe es bislang schon gejinxt, es ist aber noch nicht passiert. Wir hatten keinen Lobby-Crash. Heißt, alle sieben Stints sind bislang flüssig verlaufen. Tim hatte wohl eine Boxenstrafe. Ja, zu Recht. Wenn die Linie nicht einhalten kann, der kriegt sie. Ganz einfach. So, persönliche Nachricht. Kaisi, Gas geben. Over. Ich glaube, die Message bei Kaisi ist angekommen. Rechts ist Gas. Und wo gestreut ist, kann gerannt werden. So. Um mal hier einen ganz großen Streamer zu zitieren. Nämlich den Zitiermeister. Ja. Gott, war der schlecht. Das Willen war der schlecht. <lacht> Scheiße, war der schlecht. <lacht> oh nein. Ach, ich sehe schon, es wird als Clip bei ihm landen und dann ist die Tunnelsektion wieder los. <lacht> zu wenig geschlafen. <lacht> oh, ich... Äh, nee. <lacht> Leute, ich sollte mich mal vielleicht aufs Rennen konzentrieren. Und da ist der. Zio Toto, thank you for the follow, welcome to the race. I hope you enjoy this event so far. Die <lacht> ist <lacht> <lacht> ich finde es so dumm, aber ich finde so gut. <lacht> Grüße an der Stelle an CT-Meister, an Marcel. Ich hoffe, du hast ein schönes Wochenende gehabt. Ich habe mich eigentlich darauf gefreut, dich hier zu sehen, aber... Ey, war es nicht, es kann noch werden. Ehrlichkeit. Müsste eigentlich auch mal so Commands einfinden, wie Bier, Radler, Wein. Müsste ich eigentlich mal machen. Dafür ist ja Zeit. Also, wenn ja auch sowas wie Pneuschaden oder so machen. Jetzt wo platte Reifen ins äh, Spiel kommen sollen. Hi, just woke up. I was nervous looking. Samurai. First of all, morning. Welcome back to the stream. I was never looking. Uh, this is probably your call. That's the cockpit from it. That's breaking point. 
solidly taken the chicane. And there goes Rally Pro once again. Giving it full throttle. And I mean, that livery. That looks sick. Let me maybe quickly update you on the race. And, okay, maybe not because East and GFSI are fighting for the golden pineapple. And I must say the golden pineapple is more worth than anything else. Yeast. Now pulling GFSI in the slipstream. Is he going to make the maneuver into the second Mulsanne chicken? He pulls out, wants to stay out of any contact. And TFSI goes past him. The Porsche driver giving his best. What's the golden pineapple? The golden pineapple is a trophy for fighting for last place. Correctly, I must say they're not technically fighting for the last place overall, they're fighting for the last place in this lobby. Still? The Golden Pineapple is rumored to be the biggest and most honored trophy you can get. So in case you win the Golden Pineapple Trophy, you can call yourself the Golden Pineapple Trophy winner. It's the GPT trophy. Worse than a participation trophy. Well, it's not worse. It's better. It's even better than winning a 24 hours because if you win the golden pineapple trophy you want something who cares about winning a 24 hour race who cares about winning a race at all it's the golden pineapple you drive for looking at the hypercar grip because pekka requested it i thought pekka you might be driving this thing for now but uh I can see what you did there. Um, Casey's leading. Lap times are okayish, I would say. Pretty okay. Um, battery wise, Casey is on the limit. A widow is saving heavily, and he's maybe trying to play the long game because he has got so much battery that this will be interesting where he ends up at the end of this stint. Octavian, use the same amount as KC, finds himself back in P3 with 42.4 seconds. Little leader. But he's 7.4 seconds ahead of Kaizi, who now is going to the first chicane behind the BNT Pantera Corvette. Now goes past and smashes the pedal to the metal. Juno battling with Tim Q actually. 4p5 currently. You know, goes on the inside line, tries to squeeze himself through. Gets a little bit pushed wide. And Tim Q. Oh, this might have been a penalty. He left the track limits. Is the game going to be nice to him? It seems. Lapping, of course. At the same time is maybe the greatest thing for Yuno, but he squeezes himself on the inside line into the first Mozan chicane now. Tim Q trying to go for a wider line, but Yuno goes through. GT Finland racers back on P5 and Tim Q getting a lot of oversteer out of the first Mozan chicane. Not able to set a counter attack, but maybe through all the slipstream we might see an attack going to Indianapolis. Charles Wright said, Halber Wagenreiter. This insider never is going to be old. Rari Pro, meanwhile, leading the LNGT3 class. So nervous up front. Johnny, 11.3 seconds behind. 
Hardy 6.1 behind, but we can see he's got half a tank more than Johnny has. So Johnny is at half 50%. Gobadi is at, let's say, 90? Let's say 90. Uh, Jonas, der DON Hypercar ist in a Lobby B. Lag auf Platz 1, wurde dann von Vulkan überholt, wurde dann von einem Zwischenfall überschattet. Da gab es einen Unfall und jetzt ist er aktuell auf Platz 5. Nitro Boost gibt aber alles. Ähm, ja, Gobadi ist im P9. He is uh, closing in on Johnny. Atom Grim right behind him. Less than one second behind. And more than one second behind. Sorry, it's confused. Less than one second behind. Then there's East. Half a second penalty. He needs to serve. And there comes TFSI. Who goes past the Corvette once again? Is there anything I can update you guys about? Ja, man sollte manchmal auch das Kleingedrückte lesen auf dem Discord. Das ist wohl wahr. Es kann sein, dass man das machen sollte, aber nicht immer. Ich habe gehört, du bist ein paar Mal angekommen. Ja, wir dort eine angenehme Busfahrt und vielleicht auch ein bisschen Schlaf. Denn wir lernen, Schlaf ist wichtig. Ich denke auch äh, danach, nach dem Stint, schmeiße ich mich auch wieder ins Bett. Aber ich habe Hunger. Ich glaube, ich esse nachher noch was. So. Ähm. Tim Q und Juno haben immer noch nicht genug. Die wollen immer noch kämpfen. Weil bei Juno die Batterie deutlich besser aussieht. Da, äh, da bahnt sich, wie gesagt, das etwas längere an. Schon was bestellt? Nein. Ich werde nicht denselben Fehler machen wie letztes Jahr. Na, ah. Ihr wird nicht. Aber falls euch das mal interessiert. Nur falls. Atingren und Ave Gobadi kämpfen gerade gegeneinander um Platz 3 der LMGT3-Wertung. Zumindest hier im Grid. Nicht in der gesamten Tabelle, aber hier im Grid. Und? Atingren zieht raus. Das ist jetzt neben Ave Gobadi und das sieht nach einem Überholmanöver aus. Kann aber auch sein, dass sich hier was anderes anbahnt. Artem Grand, pace-mäßig unfassbar schnell unterwegs. Das könnte ein Cut gewesen sein. Die äh, Linie hier ist sehr interessant, aber Spider GT Lexus jetzt vor dem Spider GT Lambo. Artem Grand fliegt. Obadi ist dahinter. Und das wird Gobadi schmecken. Der kann sparen, der wird auf der Gran gezogen, verliert keine Zeit und kann so wahrscheinlich noch weniger Zeit in der Box verlieren als so schon. Es sei denn, er geht für eine Überholmanöver. Nein, Artem Graham wird geschoben. Sehen auch, ob Kobadi möchte nicht vorbei. Also ich will nichts sagen. Ich will wirklich nichts sagen. Aber hier werden jetzt alle Zügel in die Hand genommen, um irgendwie Abstand auf Johnny zu gewinnen. Der aktuell 7,3 Sekunden auf den Spider GT 
T-Lexus hat und in der Gesamtwertung mit knapp etwas mehr als einer Minute in Führung liegt. Und dadurch, dass Gobadi sicher einen Boxstop spart gegenüber Johnny, sieht das hier nach Teamarbeit aus. Forza Scuderia Veda Velocita. Rafael, welcome to the stream. I think you want to see this one. By the way, huge props to your livery designer who has been able to include some of the details throughout the race to make the car a little bit dirtier I mean look at it not the cleanest anymore definitely needs a car wash but they are getting there Come on, Kaisi, go, go, go. Ohne Strafe wäre es natürlich besser, aber 5 Sekunden vor Tim Q, der 1,7 Sekunden vor Juno ist. Wir sind in Ferrari Pro auf der 1 aktuell in der GT-Klasse vor Johnny. Der ist vor Artem Gren, der hier gerade eine 52,5 gefahren ist. Und Gobadi kann die Pace nicht mitgehen. Also Spider GT Teamarbeit gibt's nicht. Afrobody stappt sich hier eine halbe Sekunde und Atemgren fährt vorne weg. Der äh, will den Lexus nochmal nach vorne pushen. Noch mal drin, noch mal zeigen, was drin gewesen wäre. Kannst du hier noch mal P3 zeigen? Komme ich dafür? Gar nichts. Sehr gut. Also gehen wir auf den. Oh, Kaisi, das gibt's doch nicht. Kaisi, Kaisi, Kaisi. Sehen wir vielleicht, was das war? Nein, wir sehen es nicht mehr. Er steht aber Ausgang in Janapolis. Ich denke. Er wird das Fahrzeug einfach außer Kontrolle verloren haben. Das würde Sinn machen. AstroTurf auf der linken Seite rausbeschleunigen, Wheelspin und dann sagt sich das Auto. Nö. Möchte ich nicht, will ich nicht, werde ich nicht. Eisy macht auch folgerichtig den Schritt und sagt, ey, ich gehe an die Box, wir reparieren nochmal und fahren zu Ende. Denn... Die glücklichen Baumfreunde müssen natürlich sicher nach Hause gebracht werden. Das geht nicht, wenn sie einer Gefahr ausgesetzt sind. Deswegen folgerichtig, Eisi sehr gut gehandelt, auch sehr erwachsen. In die Box, Baden am Fahrzeug reparieren und dann geht es mit dem. Weiter. Also kein Wunsch zur Sorge. Wir müssen gucken, ob es ihm gut geht. Der Box ist top, der vorne ist sauer. Dem hat das gar nicht gefallen. Der hat wahrscheinlich den Schaden noch abbekommen. Aber schaut mal, die hinten sind schon wieder glücklich. Die Wolke ist auch zufrieden. Der Hase lacht, das Eichhörnchen lacht. Also, den geht's doch gut. Ist doch alles sauber. Eisi tankt jetzt nochmal auf. Materie. Ist fast am Ende angekommen. Schaden wird jetzt nochmal repariert. Und los geht's. Hat jetzt natürlich eine Minute Rückstand auf Juno. Aber was willst du machen? Yeast und TFSI kämpfen immer noch. Konfi auf P3. 
Platz Nummer 5. Artem Grand fährt vorne weg. Bei B. Bazi Drohne. Ah. Soll nicht Zitrone heißen, sondern Happy Paar Sauer. <lacht> oh, nee. <lacht> oh, war die Kamera weiter. Das sieht aus, als ob das wieder eine halbe Sekunde sein könnte. Ist es nicht. Das Spiel gönnt, Katz gönnt. Marco Bali fährt ohne Strafe weiter. Donny, währenddessen kann die Pace von Raipum mitgehen. Stadt bleibt um die 11 Sekunden herum, mal mehr, mal weniger. Währenddessen Artem Gren fliegt. Vielleicht wäre die Idee für Johnny, wenn Artem Gren sich nähert und dann auch eventuell rankommt. Lassen vorbei. Den Schatten schnorren, ein bisschen Benzin sparen. Das wäre, glaube ich, das Einfachste. Aber noch vielleicht. Mal gucken, sind ja noch 5 Sekunden. Hier wird nicht langsam gemacht, sondern ich zitiere einen, ähm, einen erfolgreichen Rallycross-Fahrer, der mittlerweile, glaube ich, im äh, Ruhestand angekommen ist. Das einzige Gas, was es gibt, ist Vollgas. Also auch für Johnny Vollgas. Und da ist er auch schon. Vollgas, Junge. <lacht> Ich schaue mal ganz kurz. Er steckt Zitiermeister. <lacht> Leute, wir müssen eines machen. Eines. Wenn Marcel den nächsten Stream anschmeißt, will ich Hashtag Zitiermeister sehen. Er wird niemals rausfinden, wieso und weshalb das zustande gekommen ist. Aber wir werden Hashtag Zitiermeister bei ihm etablieren. <lacht> das ist ein Call an alle. Und irgendwann, vielleicht in ein paar Monaten oder so, kann irgendeiner ihm den Clip zuschicken. Wie Zitiermeister entstanden ist. <lacht> ah, vielleicht freut er sich drüber. Vielleicht auch nicht. Das wäre egal. <lacht> Aber im nächsten Stream, Hashtag Zitiermeister, NCT etablieren. <lacht> Ach, schön. Ähm, ich sage, der Abstand bleibt gleich. Johnny holt auf. Diese Runde eine. Sekunde aufgeholt über solche Geschichten, freut sich CT immer. <lacht> ja, dann wird es Zeit, dass er in Zukunft auch äh, mit dabei ist. Nicht nur als Fahrer wie in Trial Mountain, sondern äh, auch als Streamer. Denn solche Geschichten schreibt nur der Sport. Und das sind 1 Euro ins Phraseschwein. <lacht> also, Donations einmal. Ne? Ein Euro ins Phrasenschwein. <lacht> Aber mal, den gebe ich nochmal. <lacht> das im 6. Setup ist gebaut, um Vollgas zu geben, sonst kill ich, Junge. Ja, auch mal Termine absagen, Sis Racer. Auch mal. Termine absagen. Prioritäten richtig setzen. <lacht> Auch auf der Arbeit kürzer treten. Scheißegal. Hauptsache GT Stream. Und selber fahren. Sag ihm das mal. Ah. Vielleicht mache ich ihm ein Jobangebot an meiner Tunnelsektion. Vielleicht will er sich der Tunnelbrigade ja anschließen. Mal gucken. Johnny gibt Vollgas. Aha. <lacht> Glaube ich nicht. GT-Stream als Hauptberuf, der Rest ist nebenberuflich. 
Ja. Glaube, glaube, nein. Ähm. Stellt euch mal vor, man macht das hauptberuflich GT Stream. Rennen in Gran Turismo hauptberuflich Stream. Stellt euch das mal vor, das ist so euer Hauptberuf. Nach drei Rennen hätte ich keinen Bock mehr. Ja, du siehst immer wieder neue Fahrer. Ja, es sind neue Rennmanöver. Ja, es sind andere Strecken. Und ja, es können auch mal andere Autos gefahren werden. Ja, alles kein Thema. Aber irgendwann wird es auch langweilig. So, wenn du arbeiten willst, willst du doch mal vielleicht raus. Vielleicht willst du selber mal fahren. Der Stream heißt ja nicht, dass du selber fährst und dabei streamst, sondern du überträgst jetzt Rennen. Im Büro kannst du auch nicht raus. Ja, aber du musst ja irgendwo auch mal nach Hause. Oder auch mal ins Büro fahren. Es sei denn, du machst Homeoffice. Dann, äh... Dann würde ich sagen, hat Corona richtig reingekickt. Hast du ein neues Mic? Ähm... Nö. Das ist immer noch dasselbe. Aber höre ich mich gut an? Das kann nicht sein. Mal ein kleines... Ähm, Update. Weil jetzt kommt so langsam die Phase, wo, äh... Die Batterie nachlässt. Vielleicht hat sich deine Stimme verändert. Äh. Ja. Sie ist weiblicher geworden, weil ich. <lacht> identifiziere mich jetzt anders. Oh! Und wie. Ja, das war elf. Das war nicht Konfi. Also da ist fast gescheppert. Wieder in den Porsche kurven. Und wieder war es ein SVV Auto, was involviert war. Es ist schon mal in den Porsche kurven schief gegangen. Und das fast. Und das wäre auch Kellen Birch gewesen. AC fliegt hier in der ersten Schikane fast ab. It wasn't Confi, it was Eighth Go Body. He had a little shaky shaky in the, in the Porsche curse. Um, it, it looked like maybe it was lag that he touched the wall. Um, I don't think so. And got away with any damage. But that's good for him. Johnny. He's pushing. Personal best 353.237. Um, what I wanted to say is, let us finally, finally, quickly go through the hypercars because Casey now has a half a second penalty. And as we can see, the hybrid now kicks in.
<laughs> um, thank you. Um, that was a nice break I had. <laughs> um, yeah, I must say, Spadigi, thank you for taking over commentary. You did a solid job. Um, might want to join me in the commentator's cabin. Because if you do, uh, I, I'd appreciate every little moment of you. Yeah. Um, but I want you to continue. Maybe a little bit. Maybe to summarize. Um, <laughs> maybe to talk a little bit about the grid. <laughs> just, just, just summarize maybe. Oh, get, get the commentator skills out. Hallo, bin neu hier. Go, go, Gia 1. Nils mit seinem Team. Hallo Schaffner, grüße erstmal deinen neuen Teamkollegen Sascha. Ähm, für Nils. Für, 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 für Nils. Für Nils brauchen wir das hier. Haben wir eben davon geredet. Er muss das ist Lobby 2, beziehungsweise Lobby äh, B. Zu verlieren, hat's ja eben gesagt. Und wie du sehen kannst, auf Platz 2 aktuell, da ist der NRC The Death. Und die sind beide. Beide. Deutlich näher ran. Doch, Auf demselben sein. Auto drauf wie Nils. Oh, ja, 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 ja. Also, es wird hier nochmal richtig spannend. Aber es sind ja noch eine Stunde Wo 45 Minuten. LMP am Ende landen wird. <lacht> Weiß ich nicht, mal gucken. Wird auf jeden Fall sehr interessant. Aber wir sehen auf jeden Fall auch, dass Wehrlein und Temp gerade sich um äh, Platz 1 der GT-Klasse duellieren. Ja. <lacht> <lacht> D.O.N. führt also. Ja, wir schalten mal zurück zu unserem Renngeschehen hier und schauen noch mal nach, was hier so abgeht. Und zwar... DFSI hat äh, in Runde 19 einen großen Fehler. Womit er knapp 10 Sekunden auf Yeast verloren hat. Der mit 56, 55, 54 Runden Zeiten relativ konstant unterwegs ist. Konfi auch relativ konstant. 55, 56, 57. Prügelt er den Lambo um den Kurs. 11 Gobadi. Immer noch auf 10. 13,3 Sekunden auf Atom Grin. Und der hat 5,3 zu Johnny. Das heißt, knapp 19 Sekunden trennen Gobadi und Johnny. Und Johnny, der drückt hier wirklich aufs Gaspedal. Der fährt hier 53er Rundenzeiten nacheinander. 53,8, 53,2, 53,0. Persönlich beste Rundenzeit und 53,3,3,4. Während Gobadi bei 53, nee, 354. 9, 3, 4, 4, 4. Das, wie, wie funktioniert Sprechen nochmal? So. 56, 9, 55, 1, 54, 7. Also es gibt hin und wieder Ausreißer, wo Gobadi Zeit gewinnt. Dann gibt es Ausreißer, wo er Zeit verliert. Aber im Großen und Ganzen ist der doch unterwegs und das ganz gut. So. Äh, apropos ähm, wo grad mein Sonntag ist. Interessiert sich eigentlich irgendjemand noch für das EM-Finale heute Abend? Aber ich sage euch ganz ehrlich, nö. Ich äh, habe kein Interesse daran, ob die Engländer gewinnen. Ich habe kein Interesse daran, ob die Spanier gewinnen. Sind beide schlimm. Ausgeld mit seinem Terrorfußball. Spanien mit ihrer Schauspielart. E. Nee. Bin ich, ist äh, beides Müll? Wer auch immer gewinnt, also es wird wahrscheinlich Spanien, dann gönne ich es zumindest der Generation, die erfolgreich ist, aber nicht der Art der Weise, wie sie gespielt haben. Ja, es war in gewisser Weise dominanter Fußball, hohes Gegenpressing und ne, aber diese, diese, diese Art, wie sie dann in Zweikämpfen unterwegs waren, das war originaler Fallobst. Das war wirklich Fallobst. 
dass da provoziert wurde. Ja, nee. Also bevor ich hier mit Fußballanalysen anfange und glaubt mir, das kann ich gut, lasse ich es lieber. Aber nichtsdestotrotz. Ähm. Das ist vielleicht etwas, was ich mal privat anfangen werde. Da könnte ich vielleicht den einen oder anderen Stream machen. Oh, jetzt mal Werbung für mich, tut mir leid. Ähm. Ja, vielleicht mache ich irgendwann mal, irgendwann mal, wenn ich Bock und Zeit drauf habe, irgendwas in Richtung Fußball. Mal gucken. Mal gucken. Ich schaue lieber Eishockey und Motorsport als Fußball, so Swiss Racer. Und jetzt möchte ich wissen, welche Eishockeymannschaft du am besten findest. Nicht NHL, sondern wir reden schon über die äh, äh, deutsche Eishockeyliga. Weil ich kann dir zwei Vereine nennen, mit denen ich so ein bisschen was verbinde. Und zwar einmal Eisbären Berlin, weil ich bin Berliner Jung. Aber auch Lausitzer Füchse. Weil äh, das war tatsächlich das erste Spiel, was ich damals gesehen habe. In Weißwasser. Weil äh, meine Großeltern kommen daher. Berliner Eisbären und Kölner Haie. Swiss Racer. So, einhaken. Wir verstehen uns. Kölner Haie auch sehr gut. Kann ich auch was ein äh, bisschen zu ziehen, weil äh, mein bester Freund kommt aus Ecke Köln. Ähm, von daher könnte ich rein theoretisch, wenn ich äh, Bock auf... <lacht> Wenn ich Bock auf Eishockey habe, ganz schnell mein Trikot wechseln und sagen, ich bin jetzt Kölner Haie Ultra. <lacht> Nein. Ähm. Aber prinzipiell, wenn ich ein bisschen was mit Eishockey anfangen kann, ist ähm, ich hab tatsächlich ein Arbeitskollegen, äh, dessen, dessen Sohn spielt in der U-Mannschaft von den Eisbären. Äh, die waren da jetzt hatten die neulich in Spanien, glaube ich, ein Turnier gehabt, wo die da waren. Ähm, der ist relativ gut dabei und was du teilweise an Equipment für Eishockeysport bezahlen musst. Boah. Also das ist wirklich gut ab. So, 13 Runden sind rum. Johnny und Ferrari Pro gehen jetzt an die Box. Da wird jetzt Reifen gewechselt und nachgetankt. Der Tim Grin bleibt draußen. Wir gucken mal ganz kurz auf die Hypercars. Widow, er spart Batterie am laufenden Band und die Rundenzeit. Wie konstant er die fährt, das ist Chefskis. Octavian 51,4 Sekunden hinter dem aktuell auf der Strecke führenden. Batterie weg. Zeiten konstant. Auch wenn die Batterie manchmal reinkickt. Trimkyo. Ja, der hat noch ein bisschen Batterie, der kommt dran. Aber von den Rundenzeiten ist Octavian. Ja, besser. Würde ich vorsichtig sein, aber. Sieht gut aus. Dann haben wir Casey, der hat gar keine Batterie mehr. Und da knicken die Rundenzeiten so ein bisschen ein. Vorher ist der ja wirklich dauerhaft 19er gefahren. Mittlerweile sind es 22, 24, 22, 22. Also da sorgt die Batterie schon dafür, dass er 3 Sekunden Pi mal Daumen pro Runde verliert. Auf Widow sind es auf jeden Fall 2 Sekunden. Er holt hier noch was raus. Dann haben wir Juno, der hat noch Batterie. Und der ist auch bei relativ konstanten 23, 22, 24er Zeiten. Der äh, weiß noch zu sparen und ich sag euch ganz ehrlich, mit der Batterie sieht ja auch mit am besten aus wie Widow, aber <lacht> Widow macht glaube ich heute keiner was. Oh, Widow jetzt in der Box. Da wird auch nachgetankt und äh, Reifen gewechselt. Kaisi ist jetzt gerade an die GT vorbeigegangen. Ah, rundenzeitenmäßig sieht das nicht so gut aus. Ah, Kaisi, der versucht irgendwie Batterie zu sparen. Aber es funktioniert nicht. Nicht ganz zumindest. Zumindest nicht ganz. Und dann, wenn wir wieder aufs GT-Grid schauen, Martin Grin 
führt jetzt. Rundenzeiten sehen auch ganz, ganz stark aus. F. Bobadi auch gut dabei. 54,5, 54,9. Octavian Disconnect. Octavian Disconnect. Welches Kind auch immer gerade in seine Starling-Schüssel reingetreten hat, ich hoffe, da schlägt ein Ziegelstein auf deinen Haaren ein. Ähm Ach, ist das bitter. Eine Stunde 35 waren noch übrig, als der Disconnect passiert ist. Dann schauen wir mal ganz kurz nach, wo denn die Jungs von der DLL standen. Auf Platz 4. Damit dürfte der RRC Hypercar vorbeirutschen und dann bleiben noch sechs Minuten knapp Renndistanz die Kaisi jetzt noch zufahren kann wir haben im Regelwerk eine Regulierung ab Moment des Disconnects werden alle deine Runden mit 103 Prozent gewertet. Das bedeutet, wenn Octavian 3,20,1 zum Beispiel gefahren ist, kriegt er auf diese Runde 3 Prozent drauf gerechnet. Diese Rundenzeit gilt dann für alle restlichen Runden, die noch zu fahren sind. Wer auch immer das jetzt durchrechnen möchte, denn ich sage mal 320, 321, 3, ja, sagen wir mal 321. Mal 21. Sind das 6 Minuten? Ich glaube nicht. Ich glaube gerade so nicht. Ich habe aber mein Mathe-Abitur mit der Hilfe eines Freundes bestanden. Von daher, frag dich bitte nicht, was sowas angeht. <lacht> ähm. Ach, ist das bitte. 1 plus 1 gibt 3. Komm auf 5, aber. Vielleicht habe ich mich ja verrechnet. Ach, ist das bitter für den Jungen. Es bleibt... Es bleibt ätzend. Es bleibt ätzend für Poktavian. Drei, einundzwanzig.
Ja. Das ist äh, gut aus. Ähm, also Charles hat es gerade mal durchgerechnet. Ähm. Also wenn Kaisi jetzt nicht irgendwo vier Minuten auf der Strecke findet, die er noch zufahren kann, dann könnten die noch an DLL vorbeirutschen. Ich äh, bezweifle das aber. ist das bitte Hast du ein schönes Nickerchen gemacht, Stick, das ist gut. Ähm, wie sieht's aus? Mit OP. Äh, Johnny und Ferrari Pro waren in der Box gewesen. Ähm, waren jetzt ihren nächsten 13 Runden Stint. TFSI ist 47 Sekunden dahinter. Ähm, Widow und Casey prügeln sich hier gerade um die Führung und ja, schieben mal einfach Johnny von der Strecke. Widow fährt Schlangenlinien, der ist damit überhaupt nicht zufrieden, was Casey macht. Levi, ja. Ähm, ist keine 10 Minuten her. Da sagt sich dieser Router Lindu. Es ist, es ist echt belastend für den Jungen. Und wie biegt in die Box ab? Muss leider sein, das Feld hat sich ein bisschen auseinandergelebt. 
Sonst äh, würde ich mein Bestes geben, um euch auch das Beste hier zu präsentieren. Wir sind spontan von meinen Eltern eingeladen zu Kaffee und Kuchen. Dann Stick wünsche ich dir ganz, ganz viel Spaß dabei. Macht es euch gemütlich. Und äh, eventuell bis nachher. Schauen, später.
Oder will ich vielleicht auch mal entmuten? Ähm. <lacht> Hoppala. Also. Mal alles nachzuholen, was ich gesagt habe. Ähm. Casey, dadurch, dass der, der die Batterie jetzt etwas länger verloren hatte, fällt erstmal raus. Widow und Tim Q kämpfen um Platz 1, aber Widow durfte über die Distanz die besseren Karten haben. Juno holt auch langsam auf, da zahlt sich ebenso aus, dass der Batterie gespart hat, wobei der nochmal rein muss und Tim Q eigentlich. Icy macht sein Ding, macht das gut, weiter so. Buddy. Persönlich Beste. 53.066. Ich sag mal mit 23,1... 21,6 und 6,5 Sekunden sind das knapp ja, 50 Sekunden, die er auf Johnny hat. Der hat jetzt auch eine halbe Sekunde Zeitstrafe. Das wird doch mal interessant zwischen den beiden. Glaube ich. Eine Stunde 14 haben wir noch. Mir übrigens aufgefallen ist, auch wenn die zwei hier gerade miteinander kämpfen, die Lackierung der beiden auseinanderzuhalten, ist nicht gerade das Einfachste. Widow will sich da vorbeiarbeiten. Ah, oh, und tut's auch. Widow geht vorbei. Der ja, Beschleunigung ist Widows Auto besser, aber auf Top End dürfte Tim Q's besser sein. Ist in Richtung Indianapolis geht Widow über die Innenseite. Bleibt erstmal vorne bei. Da haben jetzt aber eine halbe Sekunde Zeitstrafe aus Indie raus. Mal gucken, wie sie die abbauen werden. Also die beiden geben sich das hier gerade ordentlich. Widow zieht rüber. Tim Q bleibt auf der Rennlinie. Aber Widow scheint wegzugehen. Er findet es auch gar nicht gut, dass Tim Q hier so hart am Betteln ist. Ey, mir fällt das nicht. Das aber auch klar aus. Das macht irgendwo Sinn, weil beide sind auf einer ganz anderen Strategie unterwegs. Tim Q fährt andere Stints als Widow es macht. Und das macht da ehrlicherweise gesagt keinen Sinn für Tim Q da so gegenzuhalten. Vor allem, es kostet ihn auch nur Zeit. Klar, Widow gibt jetzt ein Tempo an, 
Das ist, das ist weit weg von dieser Welt. Aber dennoch, es wäre vielleicht die schlauere Alternative gewesen, sich einfach hinten ran zu hängen, ein bisschen Batterien zu sparen, vielleicht sogar ein bisschen Benzin. Weil Widow sowieso die längeren Stints fährt. Äh, Tim Q. Versteht ihr, worauf ich hinaus will? Das, äh, makes no sense. Slim, welcome. You probably want to see this beautiful car. Look at this. 16 seconds behind the leader. Doing a very good job. Uh, on the same strategy as Tim is. And if things stay the way they are. Well, I wouldn't say this, but uh, if things stay the way they are, you might lose P2 to Widow. This could happen. Widow is doing one more stop. But everyone else is too. You know has to go into the pits. Casey needs to go into the pits one more time. When you speak English, you sound Irish, English and German. That's why you should press the mute the streamer button once again. Why is he doing a solid job as well? I've got body. He's managing. And I think he will have a big gap to all the others. After the pit stop, I must say. Only have a second penalty. Wish I could mute him, being honest with you. Okay. Lambo is a P. Lambo is really a P. If you seriously want to tell me that a BMW is OP, and I think you missed all of the other races. The only reason why this car has worked for Heli is because of Heli himself. If you look at the way Gobadi is driving and keeping the lap times this consistent as well as Unfi usually does, you see that there's a big difference between Fuel saving and lap times. Because if the M6 would be able to save fuel the same way as he does, this car would do lap times beyond the four minute mark. Trust me. Trust me. The 
the only reason this car is so fast is because of setup. That's the only reason. Get the car to let it work, you have to rev up completely high. And that kills the car for an endurance race completely. We didn't even look for quality or for race setups. We just tried to make the car work for somehow. And it was clear from the straight beginning that you don't need to save fuel with this car. It's 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 impossible to do so. I, I think I, I think it is so I mean it is what it is Considering the cars I've tested, I also I also must say that the Lexus in testing on this track was horrible. It really was horrible. The thing is that I've seen Ferrari Pro doing solid lap times in this car now. But I've already seen some BOP variations from the same team as well. So I do hope that he has the right BOP on the car. Otherwise. It's no surprise for me that it's not working the way. I know that Atomgren is incredibly fast. I mean, I'm trying to be as transparent as, as, as I could even be. Can you look back into maybe the stint I had? Maybe to this one Stick had or Johnny or Heli. You've clearly seen what happened to Confu. Nothing. He's just saving fuel as much as he can, and considering the fuel he has left, I might even think that he's going to finish without another box, uh, another pit stop. And of course, it's not about a single lap pace, because otherwise. BMW, if we all had seen what, what Halley is doing for lap times in this car, the car would have been nerfed pretty, pretty hardly. The same thing is when I get told that the Lamborghini usually works not with the ECU system to make it worse or to patch it in a BOP works over the power restrictor and it also makes sense to me that the car works 
Oh, this could... I, I must say that I can't handle the Lamborghini, but I can't handle any other MR car. And... Fuck the batteries, honestly. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, Widow is still... It's got some battery left. Casey has none. Jim Q has none. You know, has a little bit left. Kaisi has none. That's all. Um... I, I really try to be transparent as I always am. And to maybe maybe compare some stuff. If you remember the 24 hour race we had at Spa in March, you also have seen that there are two cars working incredibly good fuel saving. And that was the RRC Mazda Vision. And it was the Toyota Supra GT500. Both cars were able to do 20 laps without any issues. Some had to adapt to it. McLaren made it made it uh, work in with Spider GT and uh who else was driving the McLaren and made it work for somehow? I can't remember. Either way, you've seen that the GT500 Supra, that the Mazda RX Vision and the McLaren were able to do 20 laps without any problem. Now, take the same conditions with two times uh, fire management and um, fuel and take another car. Take take the Mercedes Benz, the 20, 20th version. And believe me when I say you're not going to do more than 14 laps in this car without looking on heavy fuel management. And if you do heavy fuel management, you're going to lose two seconds at least in one lap. I can guarantee you this. And I'm also gonna say that I'm not as skilled as Atim Gren is, as Avi Gubadi is. I'm not as close as skilled as them. But for my personal understanding, if I'm transparent enough, you can see that on the mall, where you're constantly in the high ref zones, where you have straights and high gears, high refs, without any ending point. It is obvious for me that a car like Lamborghini is going to work way better than that BMW is. The only reason why this car is fast is because it gets the power in high revving. But in the same way, it loses a lot of fuel during the stints. Which is kind of different for the Lamborghini. Who has a constant power curve. The same was with the GT500 Super at Spa. You could have shifted earlier, you could have shifted later, and you may have lost 1 or 2 kph on a straight by shifting earlier. But the car itself gave you always the same amount of power, no matter if low or high revs. Which means it has a constant fuel consumption. So it won't lose any additional fuel if you rev higher, but it would save a lot more if you rev the same over the whole time. Which is different in this car. Different in that car. The Lexus was last year's OP car because it could save fuel without doing anything special. You could have driven Road Atlanta, you could have driven Spa, you could have driven Fuji or whatever track. This car saved you two laps minimum. And of course, you can say that Heli did a 51.3 in quality with this car. And he may have done another exciting lap mid race. But have you seen the quality lap of Heli himself? If you would have seen the lap, you would have seen that Heli has been towed in slipstream over the Molson Straits 
and into Indianapolis by me, you would have seen that the lap was hit perfectly, nearly perfectly in every freaking way. Because I must say, as I know Haley a little bit, Le Mans is his second or even most favorite track. I can remember in GT Sport he was driving the uh, 919 Porsche hypercar. And even back there he was smashing it completely. It wasn't even near anything. In Gran Turismo Sports he was using the M6 and Norch Life. He was using TC1 and he was smashing it completely. And I wouldn't say that Atom Grenon Ava Gobadi are worse skilled than him. I would even say they are more skilled than him. It's also amazing to see that there are people that get the COVID running. Because again, I tried everything to make these cars work. The Porsche, I, my dear God, I cannot handle MR cars. Even though some would say the Porsche is not an official MR car because it drives like an MR car. I'm not able to handle this type of car. And I'm saying that I'm bad in it, of course. And I completely agree with it. If, if you say that I suck at this car, I suck. And I'm completely fine with it. It doesn't hurt my ego in any way whatsoever. But to make it realistic, I think that the Porsche as well... ...loses some... ...some time on this track, not because of the way the car is built, but in a way of managing. I remember in the first time Gambit was... was solidly managing and had a very solid pace but I wouldn't also say that TFSI is a slow driver maybe it's personal preference maybe it's just but I'm going to end the discussion here because I see that there's no point in continuing this discussion if there's a respectful and honest way of communicating to each other, we can start talking again. And whoever is sitting behind that Spider GT Racing account, I'm talking directly to you. And I'm not hurt by any way, but I'm just, just saying it honestly. I agree on that. Porsche is also very good on fuel. I agree on that too. But again, if one day there is a chance to talk normally without any any personal comments, without any other stuff, we might start talking again. But in this way, honestly, and that's personal preference, I'm not talking as Olga, I'm not talking as Lipsy, I'm talking as my private person. If you start to be disrespectful to me, I'm not taking you serious anymore. That's all I can say. I'm not taking you serious anymore. That suggestion that maybe more people get involved it is good but think think of your own team who would be responsible or who would say it himself hey I want to support you I'm getting involved in the BOP let me assist you in making honestly this guy has been doing the BOP for over one and a half years. And there was no real compliance without Le Mans. It was last time, it's this time. Maybe it's the Le Mans itself, maybe it's the track characteristics, whatever. 
but he has been doing the BOP more or less on his own and worked every time besides Lemo. And I understand his perspective is he, if he says, let me work on my own, I'm gonna do it on my own because he feels this works the best. I respect it. And if it makes stuff work for him, it's good. And personally, I don't know who else should get involved in making a BOP system in Gran Turismo Sports. I honestly say making BOP for me is too much effort. I'm not interested in making BOP at all. And I also say that I maybe don't like making BOP at all because I don't like WEC at all. It's just like my not, not my type of driving. I, I just like to get into a car. Don't make any other setting or change any settings if it's stiff, if it's aerodynamics, if it's uh, gearbox whatsoever. It's just not for me. I just like to sit in a car, drive, and that's it. There are some other possibilities of making a BOP. You could maybe say, hey, everyone starts with that. And then during a season, like in the uh, DTM, cars get more and more weight during a season if they perform better. But that's also unbalanced at some point. Because you get sent back in the beginning of a season and the other cars all have got more weight and then in the end of the season you're just going to smash everything and just get a comeback of a year or something. I mean... I do think that at some point... There are little adjustments needed, there are little things that can be done different. But the most important and annoying thing for me is if you start to comply but you don't offer any solutions. Now, I'm not saying it to you directly, I'm saying just... Let's keep it simple, if you want to get involved in something then start doing something. Offer yourself and maybe doing the BOP checks. Offer yourself and maybe doing timekeeping. Offer yourself and hosting. Offer yourself and streaming. Organizing races like these are not simple at all. Over the last three weeks, I was talking nearly with everyone to somehow get this event organized. Because I wanted to avoid another 24 hour race split, so that we have split one at one weekend and another split at the other weekend. I, want, I wanted to avoid less interest, I wanted to make something special for today personally. And I personally think it worked. But the amount of time, the amount of messages, the amount of organization that went into this is behind everything. Some people call me stupid because I invest so much time into it. I missed real life appointments. I missed stuff in, 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 in studies. Just because I wanted to get orga done. I slept less in a, in a night. I was awake until midnight, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Got up at 5, slept maybe 2 hours a day to somehow get stuff organized. And yet I will say, it, 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 it worked. But, again. If you want to do something, then do it. If you complain about something, but don't have solutions, then shut the fuck up, honestly. I'm getting angry at this point, sorry, but it, it just annoys me. People not respecting the work from others. The amount of time, the amount of sweat that goes into something. And everyone has got excuses, everyone has got a full-time job, everyone has got family, everyone has got friends, other interests, other stuff to do. Everyone has, but somehow others are able to find the time to manage it. And I remember doing, uh, seeing seeing Charles, Confi, Nushul and many others getting involved into the DES with Orga shit over the last couple of years. 
And those three are mentally done with this series because they worked so freaking hard in managing everything. And I'm not saying that you can't manage your time either. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the amount of work that people put in and stuff like this are being treated with nothing and just hearing complaints about BOP, complaints about Orga, complaints about stuff that they even aren't capable of managing. What should timekeepers do when someone doesn't provide his gap correctly or on time or forgets it or someone valid invalidates his BOP or misses a stint because he oversleeps or whatever? The only thing for that is... Hey, BOP is not right. Fuck this shit. Hey, why are we one hour in delay? What is this shit? Can't we fucking race? I just hope that one day people understand all the sweat and all the work that goes into programs like this. I mean, it's still amazing that... Just, just, just take a look. Just take a look. At the same time, 13 other cars are driving in another lobby for currently. We had 35 cars going into this race. We had 128 people involved in only attending a car. Seven of these teams pulled out. Two retired. So that makes us with 26 cars left. Nushin, who already said, I don't want to be involved in anything of organization because he's tired of it, still worked hours on the document to somehow make it work so the fluence uh, changes are working, um, people can get relegated or promoted from the lobbies, that the timings are right, that the gaps are calculated correctly, that driven laps that haven't been ended due to the lobby ending that this is calculated as well <laughs> by the way we all shouldn't do this we are not forced to do anything but we do because it is fun because we are interested in it because we want to make things work and appreciate ourselves and driving and attending these events and just keep racing for god's sake And in the end, I'm happy about the fact that if we make something like this work, and I guarantee you in the next couple of weeks, there is a lot happening in the background that you don't know. They're gonna, there are a lot of changes coming. Where, again, a lot, is, a lot of work is needed. But in the end, I'm just happy if it works. Honestly, if you say that I won't do anything in Orga because maybe I, I have time, I'm, I'm busy over the whole day. Doing small organization stuff doesn't take a lot of time, honestly. Hosting a session is just turning a PlayStation on, open a lobby, get everyone in there and just let the console on. Streaming is getting a software on a PC or streaming it on a PlayStation. Just talk a little bit, show us some aspects, that's all. Yeah. Co commentating is maybe sitting in a lobby together or look in a chat, talk to the commentators, maybe the chat interact, that's all. Timekeeping is just look at the gaps, write them, stuff. That's all you need to do. And additionally, that's something that annoys me the most. If there's a team that registers their car, doesn't attend and the only answer I get the skibbity toilet. I'm just I'm just done honestly. Either way. Um never ending game. When will we finally get another hypercar in the game? 
honestly, I don't think that we're going to get one at all. I don't think that we're going to get a hypercar at all because in the, in the direction that GT brought out cars over the last couple of months they somehow tend to go for VGT cars that are useless either it's the Genesis or the Skoda one they're going for street cars that can be used for different racing ideas I, i'd say racing formats like the volvo um they introduce us six new cars in a new update which is going to come out um not next week but week after I mean, I don't want to start another discussion about it because I I, I talked to it, uh, to, I talked to Poctavian uh, last couple of times about it, and I don't want to be disrespectful or mean in any way, but we people, as we all sit here together and look at. Uh, look at the race that is currently happening. Um, I must say that we aren't as a target for the developing crew at PD. We we just aren't. The car uh, the cars brought in into the game are more or less. That was quite a good definition. Um, I think it was Chica who said this. The game is built on a pick up and play system. It is called the Real Driving Simulator. Um, as good physics, I'd say, but it more goes into a sim arcade rather than a simulation or an arcade game. It's rather both together. This reminds me of Formula 1 back in the day, and when I see how tired I am of Formula 1 in general for now, I just hope that GT is not going to the same direction, because then the game will be worse with every single release I have. GT itself, I must say that the amount of detail we have in the game is amazing. That's something other games cannot do. If it's Assetto Corsa Competizione, if it's iRacing, if it's Automobilista 2, if it's Project Cars, if it's Formula 1. Gran Turismo gives you so much detail in the cars, in, in details, in graphics, in stuff that maybe no one else cares about. The amount of love for these cars is amazing and that's something I hugely respect from uh, Paz. I, 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 can't, I cannot say it differently. I, I mean I, I respect it but what I want to say is the amount of people that really are interested in the game that spent a lot of time with it that are driving most of these cars that are maybe specialized for group 3, group 2, group 1 or doing classic car events and I must say that in the league or in the group where he is RRC they are doing a lot of classic car events and never ending game you are involved in them as well Night Raiders involved in them as well Comrade Top Racer Amskira and all of the people I I got to know in RRC they are focused and do a lot of other events Um, RSC, I personally would say, in the way they attend, or in the way they also make events, they get a lot out 
of the game than probably I do. I'm only interested in racing Group 3 and Group 4 cars and that's it. I have been driving Group 1 cars, I have been driving Group 2 cars, and also in Kyoto I tested the Honda, I tested the Lexus, I tested the Nissan, I tested the classic cars. In the end, I sa I I'd say to me, hey, it's, it's fun to drive, but it's just nothing for me personally. The same goes for Lago Maggiore, where I, where I had a horrible race in my hypercar. And I completely let my team down. I also said, hey, this car is somewhere fun to drive. It's fast, it's hard to manage, it's, it's hard to control, it needs a lot of skill. It makes a lot of fun, but it's just nothing for me. And I don't want to force myself on doing other things. That I don't like. That's why I said, even I don't like the prince uh, and the concept of the WEC um, in the way it's managed in Gran Turismo. I think we still do the best out of it. And I must say that with all the amount of preparation that we had um, getting into this race, I had a lot of fun, as Johnny probably now has as well, as he tries to go past yeast. In the last couple of minutes 35 minutes let's say this way i had a lot of fun even though it was sweaty it was hard it was annoying sometimes because the setup wouldn't work because the settings aren't the right ones but the funny thing is and that's also something i want to talk about is the team you are in gives you a lot of strength in many different ways next event is going to be Tsukuba nine hours you're already talking about that in the chat and I'm already fully in it it's group four it's Tsukuba it's something we've never done before um it's only group four in Tsukuba I mean group three would have been complete chaos otherwise I would say that everyone picks a Nissan Skyline Silhouette and uh all the others just drive group four and that's the only group three car allowed but Honestly, I'm, I'm I'm quite very interested to see what's going to happen at Sakuba because we have new cars, we have uh, cars that are working over the front, which is Audi, Volkswagen, uh, Mazda 3, um, I think a Renault is also involved this, uh, there as well, there's a uh, Peugeot that works over the um, front and not over the rear. Um, I think that's going to be very interesting to see, especially Tsukuba is also a track where rain is possible with the small amount of place you have. I, I'm already excited to see all the battles we will have there, the amount of consistency you need to bring in because the lap times are below uh, one minute. Um, it's 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 amazing, and I'm already hyped for it. Uh, Tsukuba is on the 10th of August, so it's uh, less than a month, and with all the amount of changes uh, upcoming. I am, I am very, very interested to see what is going to happen, because I can say that we are working on a box-to-box -box system um, to make stint changes more fluently and easier, so that the gaps aren't needed. Um, I can also tell you that the new stewarding system is uh, is, is is in in development to make this process easier. To again get rid or get some work off or get rid of some work from other shoulders because he and i have to accreditize this as well he has been doing a lot of stuff in the orga even though he isn't any orga anymore he's head steward he's manageable uh, managing the bop he's managing other stuff as well and i personally i said i we need to do something about this and that's why i already told confi listen you did a solid job with stewarding with BOP but I want to get some work off your shoulders and um, that's why we're working on a new stewarding system with other people that won't be racing in the series as well so they are completely in, uh, independent from Orga, from teams or whatever um, yeah as I as I as I said Sucubus upcoming I, I'm already amazed by the idea we have a, a team for what type of liveries we are going to attend in um, I hope that I will so find someone who's going to attend in the Bugatti with me or in the uh, Nissan Silvia and whatever car. Um, I am I am hyped for that already, and I'm also happy that uh, my team personally in BMW that Johnny is in um, 
and it quite managed pretty good even though I thought it's going to be way worse um, I mean I'm already even interested to see how uh, Norch Life is going to work in uh, in October I'm, I'm interested to see how the, all the other stuff is going to work out I'm also interested in already planning the next season and with what type of events we're going to do, if there's going to be one 24 hour race more, if we do less events, but then bigger ones, if we do... Uh, it's, it's all... I'm hyped in general because... To finally end this whole discussion topic... The Digital Endurance series... It's not about winning and showing everyone that I am the best or we are the fastest or we are the best in tire management or fuel management. It's about it's about driving together to meet new people, to unite other teams, groups, to get in touch with each other, to enjoy ourselves on track, to drive different cars on different tracks on different conditions. And Again, I'm just I'm just happy that so many people share this kind of interest and attend to these events because as well it's not it's not guaranteed that someone wakes up in the middle of a night on a weekend where you could sleep longer, enjoy time with his wife or friends or family or whatever. And just have a good time besides racing on a freaking PlayStation 4 or 5 and do some endurance races. Which aren't even real endurance races. Those are seven sprint races calculated together, to be honest. But still, so many people are interested in doing the same stuff. And I just like the fact that we are so many and just make things work in the way it works now. And of course, Charles, I understand if you're not org anymore. That's something I want to mention as well. Charles has nothing to do with the series anymore. We had private talks and he told me multiple times that he doesn't want to do anything with the series anymore because he's tired of it. And he still woke up in the middle of the night after I asked him to do so. To maybe request if there is a small possibility. Even if there's a small possibility, I believed in it. And still, Charles still woke up at 3 a.m. in the night and said, I'm going to stream the 15th at 4 a.m. And stream a stint in a fucking 24 hour race at Le Mans. And as well, maybe, and I hope so, the box to box system is already going to implement it um, for Tsukuba. Oh no, yeast disconnect! Ah, for fuck's sake. I guess the vibe is over now. Either way, I do hope that the box-to-box -box system is going to be implemented for Tsukuba as well. But for this, there's another one important thing. We need all of you guys. We need you to adapt to the system. We need you to figure out how things work. We need you to test it out generally. Logi, thank you for the follow. I think you want to see your teammate and I must say he's doing a pretty solid job. But again, to finally end the discussion. Olga's going to announce some stuff in the next couple of days. It's going to present you stuff and then we all have to test it out and involved hey focus on the fucking straight <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> oh man, this is just badass. That's true. I'm not even criticizing the gap system. I mean, that was an idea we had, and Nushul again somehow hard cored the Excel document and somehow made it work. It was as well sitting hours a day on this document to somehow make it work for us. That's also something that is not guaranteed. Let's work and sweat and tears to somehow make something work for people that not might even respect the fact that he's doing it but either way even though document has got still some issues i'm really 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 thankful that he did all the things that he's done and i'm really hoping i am really hoping that he's going to attend to kuba as well Put some sort of JDM old classics Japanese livery on a freaking Nissan Silvia or whatever car. And just thank it for the memes. Either way, let me go through the grid and finally focus on the race once again. Widow is leading. By 18.2 seconds to KC, still has got pretty decent battery management. KC in P2, half a second penalty, has got 6 seconds to Tim Q, who has got non battery left. KC has got the same amount of battery. Then there's Juno in P4, 35.5 seconds behind the RRC hypercar. I do think that they're going to lose the position to. Capital, but I think P3 overall. I think overall, as a debuting team in this series, with no knowledge over the series whatsoever, I've got huge respect for them for managing this thing so well, especially Slim having this decent comeback in his stint where he used to save a lot of battery and then just came from behind. Well, no, maybe not, but he just fought himself back and made probably the biggest comeback of the year. To them as well, that's their first WEC race. Uh, combined Bonsai Racing and uh, International Racing Crew. It's such a funny and beautiful livery there. Uh, you can do it on the Discord in Adboard if you want to. There's a specific channel for everyone to... Uh, You can promote your stuff. <laughs> Lugi, that reminds me of the thing that we had in the training session where we went to Kyoto and parked the ambulance <laughs> on the downhill section and <laughs> just had the tomahawk fly over us. Ambulance is crazy, lol, love it. And the tomahawk was flying. <laughs> He was flying multiple times. Attengren leading the DT field 17.3 seconds. We need one non championship round with crazy car routes. Those ideas are amazing. How about we repeat that what we've did in the DLI GT season and let these people drive in rally cars at one specific rally track? Doesn't need to be Fisherman's Ramp, it doesn't need to be the Snow Track, it doesn't need to be any other. But to make. Let me find someone who's going to manage this stuff. Maybe make it once a month. 
twice a month, once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks. Where it's how is this no new cold track? Uh, I got not one. We should do others. We should do fun events, honestly. And I'm keen to say that I honestly, I would stream this bullshit. I would stream it, honestly. Get stuff together. Get 15 people in idols. I stream. And we go for it, honestly. I, I, I'm, I'm here. I say, my hand is up. My thumb is on my on my hand, and I say. With this, I apply as a steward. Uh, as a steward. Complete speech is ruined. Complete speech is ruined. I don't need to say anything. That's the speech is ruined. I got declined. Need another job interview for some time. Yeah, A3 Drive Rally, the horns of the car has to be equipped on the throttle pedal as well. So every time you accelerate, the horn of the car is on. Same as it was with the other GTC set. <laughs> yeah, Nushal in the in the freaking uh, Ford Focus just smashing the car in the straights completely. Then you had Stick and Confi in the Peugeot. Um, I was driving a Subaru, and the only thing you heard on the straights on the cars was. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time, drifting through the corners, you didn't even hear. He, you didn't even hear any ref sounds or. Uh... <laughs> it was a league race. It was not a fun race. It was mid-season, or well, let's say it was the second last race. And just stopped the ambulance doing the horn noses. <laughs> Just people football chat something. <laughs> and you grab the horn to the throttle. Um, I think on a controller it's possible, because there you can uh, change the bottom mapping, and maybe you can, maybe you could try it out in case you want to. Can you show hypercar? Close. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. And there's five. I'm. I'm. I'm but guys, honestly, I'm. I'm, I'm Sir Rico. Thank you for the fellow. Welcome to the stream. But, um. Guys, honestly, um, if if you are interested in stuff like this, we have a feedback channel where you can put in these kind of ideas. We as as Olga, or let's, or maybe I'm not speaking for everyone, but I, as a newly Olga member, I am as transparent and honest to every one of you. And if there are things that you want to try, if you want to do. Just try to speak openly, just call it. Maybe there are people... Maybe there are people that are interested in doing these ideas as well. Especially if I say, if there's any one of you who wants to drive the Bugatti at the Tsukuba race, DM me, we'll do a... We'll do an idea, even if we have to drive... If, if, if you and me are the only two drivers that are driving in car. Honestly, and... If you say that we're going to make a, a, a new a new series idea, let's make it a new series. Let's let's say we're doing it once a month. Let's call it the DES shit show. Let's do it. Let's call it the DES shit show. I would stream this. Let's do it on Saturdays as well, so that everyone could probably organize it and wouldn't even change any other stuff. Let's call it the DES shit show. It would be three S's at the end. Um. Let's call this. It's the Digital Endurance Shit Show. 
<laughs> it's the digital endurance shit show. <laughs> but let's do it this way. And I'm and I'm and I'm honestly serious about that. Let's do it this way. We need someone who plans the events. We need someone who organizes it. Do we need stewards for this thing? No, we don't, because damage is gonna be turned off and we can dive up the shit of everyone. Um we can make ready races, we can make engine swapped ambulance races, we can make key car races, we can make uh, a group one cars, we can race in a tomahawk, we can do a fucking beetle race on special stage route X with slipstream where your car maybe reaches 40 kph and you're driving one lap on the special stage route X and I don't know how long it would take, maybe would a 10 hour endurance race just to get one lap over. I mean... In case you are interested in doing stuff, Confi's got damage. In case you are interested in doing stuff, just that's the thing, and I and I like to compare it to the whole world. I really like to just to 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 to, to um compare it to the world. There are multiple of different different things that the world offers to you you just need to take them the same is with a simple job application if you think that you may not be good enough for a wow keepage thank you for the fellow welcome to the same how are the vntp cars doing let's see where are they hold up oh, yeah, i already remembered uh Yeast disconnected, but hold up. Let us check in a second lobby. Look at Niger Boost, the death uh, CO2 UK SMP4, Staring TR SMP5, Pineapple Boy SMP6, Chica 7 is battling with JPE pretty hardly for their lead in the other lobby. Also das wird nämlich jetzt mal interessant, was da passiert mit dem Vierkampf, wie die Überrundung, über, Überrundungen sind. Oder wir machen es anders da, wir machen es noch viel besser. Wir gehen direkt schon auf diesen Vierkampf. Dort ist JPE jetzt vorbei. An Ch äh, ja. Ja. Chica, danke. Chica, danke. Ähm, der greift aber... Oh, ich dachte, jetzt zieht er noch rein. Nee, also da mit JPE vorbei. Wie sieht's da hinten bei Rewrite the Bike aus? Der ist da, da kommt Temp. Temp wird jetzt überrundet. Ich denke mal, der Teamkollege Vulkan wird jetzt ein bisschen Windschatten ihm dann gleich geben. Wenn der kommt. Weiß ich gar nicht, ob da ist das denn erlaubt? Weiß ich gar nicht. Ich weiß es nicht, aber bisher. Also wer allein überrundet? So, Temp, jetzt gucken wir mal, was der Teamkollege macht. Ob er ihm unterstützt. Oh, was ist passiert? Oh. Ich weiß nicht, ob der Temp kommt da noch von Chica gekriegt hat. Aber ich würde wow, sagen, I'm just seeing that they are very close to each other in the lobby. JPE, Tam, Riveting, Bike, Chica. They are all within 5 seconds, Verlein as well. Also, man sieht aber, wow. dass Vulkan langsamer macht. Vulkan macht langsamer. Mm -hmm. Der macht mm -hmm. nicht so schnell. Der gibt den Windschatten für seinen Teamkollegen, für den Temp, weil sie aber selber wissen, dass sie Chancen haben. Ähm. Uh, interesting. Der Hypercar gives Temp wow, Slipstring. Ja, das wird jetzt hier spannend. Yeah, okay. I have no clue about the standings. So I haven't got any clue either. <laughs> um. The thing is. Because I just read it that uh, Capital had to re uh, retire the second hypercar. Necessity. I have got one serious question to you. How the hell did you manage to be so fast in this hypercar? Or better said, how the hell is your team smashing this car completely? When I looked at the quality times you guys did, I was really impressed. Now, if there's an answer like Skibbity Toilet, I'm just gonna leave the chat, honestly. 
Then it's not mute the streamer anymore, it's just the streamer left and it's all. <laughs> I don't know. It's driving. It's driver skill. I, I like that skill. You got it. Great stuff. <laughs> Guys, 10 minutes left. And then we have done a 24 hour race at Le Mans. We've lost some cars during the stint. We saw comebacks. We saw big discussions. We saw amazing overtakes. We saw. We saw a lot. What position is Nova? There you go. Um, in the end, let me quickly go through the grid and explain your stuff a little bit. Widow is probably going to take... Probably, probably going to take... The Capital Hypercar on the second place of today's event behind the winners of this event and that should be a defense because they were successful last year as well Back then it was a combination with Halix, this time it's a combination with Halix as well, but not in the way they used to. It's a combination because one Halix driver left the team. Scuderia, Vedo, Velocita made themselves independent left. Left the agreement. I don't know how to better say it, but they started things on their own in the DES and this thing made them successful. Casey, Pekka and Anto will secure their victory in another 24 hour Le Mans race in the LMH class. Probably. Team Q is going to grab P4. Four. The ROC hypercar probably. Not only due to the fact that Poctavian in the disconnect, but also I think over the longer race distance, I think that Team Q would have gotten Poctavian. But that's something we never will find out. Either way, RC is 99% gonna finish on P2. Then there's you know, you know, driving for Gran Turismo Finland races. I hope that GT stands for Gran Turismo, and otherwise it's only GT Finland races. As I said before, debuting in this series, this is their first race. Slim, one of their drivers, had a pretty decent comeback in the first stint. Managed to get home in P2. Now they managed this car over the whole race distance. And it probably won't be enough for P2, but it's going to be enough for the third place that is the bronze medal. And honestly, I was expecting expecting them to be as an underdog and they really impressed me. So I would caref carefully say congratulations on this third place in this endurance race. Because another thing I want to mention is that the whole grid was stacked with drivers beyond good. Beyond good. Ah, Kaizi 
that's a great time to actually prove me wrong no <laughs> um if you look at the lap times people have been driving if you look at the consistency if you look at the speed of the battery management if you look at the fairness and all of the other stuff this field is amazing so many fast and fair drivers so many battles so many close jesus i i just want to i just don't want to talk, stop talking even additionally if we see this team they started in lobby b they got promoted into lobby a stayed there without any further ado and managed to secure their fifth is it fifth place right i think it's going to be sixth place again i think it's going to be sixth place but again it's their debut in the wc series as well especially for the bonsai guys they have been attending uh, tri mountain as the first race had two cars there now they have re-entered in the wc series had a lot of fun with this car i think as well they had some fast drivers um Ritem, Ruse, Kaisi, Georgi um Suits Racer was maybe able to join as well but sadly he didn't either way again um they did a solid job then there's Atom Gren driving on Spider GT his first race as well in the series um smashing it completely in his stint they started in lobby a as well um got relegated to lobby b because kyle had a horrible stint but managed to fight their way back up into lobby a and there's afco body managing this whole race amazingly and probably if their disconnect wouldn't have been they would have also taken the lead and probably won this race as well we have nova ferrari pro i'm interested to see if the bop validation is in fact a validation or if it's wrong bop i hope it's not because they have been showing pace over the whole race when I was on track, I enjoyed the battle with Sonic Marathon with Ferrari Pro. Um, I've seen... I've, I've seen others doing pretty well, but I was really impressed by them driving the Lexus as well. There's Johnny. I don't want to lose too much words about my uh, my team I was attending because um, I don't like to, 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 drive, to talk positively or to say my team did an amazing job, but I must say... Um, that we have prepared a lot and good and it was a lot of fun to somehow make bmw work and um, even if it's maybe due to a disconnect we will wait and see what happens for um, all the calculations and gaps um i do think that we even if we're not going to win i think we did a solid job we got the maximum out of the car and um i just love that the team spirit is working as well we have Confi and the RC Lambo. I think they also did a pretty solid job. Not only Confi, but Knight Rider and Megal as well. Um, I do think that they got the best out of the Lamborghini as well. They managed a lot of fuel. They did one stop less, which is already amazing. And... Ah, no, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. And for me personally, I'm very about, I'm very happy about uh, seeing TFSI racing. I also had one stint with him, but I didn't uh, race with him on track, sadly. Um, I once had a battle with him last year. It was Monza. He was driving the Lexus. I was driving the Aston Martin. And uh, this was one hell of a stint. We had close fights. It was, everything was fair. Um, it was amazing literally and uh, i was very happy to to see him re-enter because he's been um he's been gone for a while but i'm very happy to see uh, again the wsr porsche on the grid as well with not only him but also gamutost otaku and uh crackery it's always a pleasure to see uh, wsr driving uh, in this series as well even though they attended to less uh gt series events in the past but 
either way. And even though we have less than one minute left, let me quickly go to this lobby where you can also see a lot of other cars driving Vulcan, and I see the Def Nitro Boost, CO2 UK, Starring TR, Pineapple Boy, Chica, Everything Bike, Verline, and uh, many, many other people. But 20 seconds left. And no, Eiffel Blitz, I'm not going to drive in the Swift. I absolutely hate this car. I absolutely hate it. Brand Sage, first turn, I never made it through it. I hate it, honestly. And there we go, final lap. Three hour stint is over. Who is going to be the first one who gets the catch uh, checkered flag? It's Confi. Congratulations to RRC to making it to the finish line. Going to be interesting where they end up in the standings, but congratulations. Another endurance race done by RRC. Congrats to Confi, Mega L, and Knight Rider. Who is going to be the next one? Who gets the checkered flag? It is going to be TFSI for WSR Porsche. Congratulations to them as well, to Otaku, to Gregory, to Gamutos, and to TFSI himself for making it through the 24 hours of the DS Le Mans event. Who is going to be the next one? It is. The winner of this then with a cheeky little drift coming out of the last chicane, it's Widow for Capital. Congratulations to them as well. Who is going to be the next one? It is Easy for Happy Tree Racing. Happy Tree Friends Racing. Congratulations to your team as well. And who is going to be the next one? We all know who it is. It's Casey for Scuderia Vedo Velocita who messes up the entry to the finish line in style. Bottled it and lost P2 as well. Oh my god. <laughs> that was one way of ending the race. Thank you. Got himself P2 at this thing. <laughs> At the end of the <laughs> Congratulations, Casey, for this maneuver. <laughs> Who is going to be the next one? 50 seconds left. And it's going to be, you know, Swandersberg, thank you for the follow. Oh, Finally. Welcome back. You know, finishes in fourth. And that's P3 for GT Finland Racers. Congratulations. For this as well, Atom Grand finishes in P1 in the GT class at this stint. Congratulations oh to you as well. Avko Body finishes in P2. Congratulations. Unbelievable pace by Gobadi once again. Who's going to be the next one? Will we see Ferrari Pro and Johnny finish the race? I don't think so, but it's a race to the finish line. Five seconds left. Ferrari Pro and Johnny give the maximum, but I don't think that it's going to be enough. And in the chicane, they are pulled off. Has anyone clipped the KC thing? <laughs> wow. Um. I hope I hope it's clipped. It has to go into the memory books. Send this over there. You can see Widow getting the victory for this stint. Save the replay. Save the results. Again, Pocktave and Yiskiti had a disconnect. Unfortunately, the fastest lap goes to KC with a 318.933. And... I don't want to say anything more. Besides... Before... Before ending the stream. Check out the delivery poll. It's valid for one more hour. You can vote four of your favorite liveries 
in either Hypercar or Ellen GT3. Um, I'm going to repeat myself in German later on, but for all of the English speaking fellas out here, thank you. Thank you very much for attending the 24 hour race, for enjoying the ride in chat as a viewer, as a driver, or a supporter. Thank you to everyone who has worked in the background and the organization stuff with his team, making entries possible to get the stint order together look for a car to make everything work thank you for all the hard work you've been putting into and once again thank you everyone for enjoying the ride with us together that was from my side i will switch to german to uh say these things in german again um if we don't see each other again leave a follow do not miss any other races. Uh, next up is going to be on the 10th August. It's going to be um, the 9 hour Group 4 race at Tsukuba. Don't miss that. Um, otherwise, have a good time, enjoy yourselves, and uh, always remember to uh, stay happy and make the best out of every situation. And let me finally switch to German. Leute. 24 Stunden sind geschafft. Zwei Lobbys parallel. Anfangs gedacht als ein 30 Auto Grid Rennen. Am Ende waren es leider nur noch 26. Unglaublich. Unglaublich. Was wir auf die Beine gestellt bekommen haben. Vielen, 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 vielen Dank an alle, die heute dabei waren. Die uns während der Fahrt unterstützt haben. Die im Hintergrund einiges organisiert haben. Die sich das alles angeguckt haben. Die mit dabei waren. Auch, das habe ich ganz vergessen zu sagen, danke an jeden einzelnen externen, neu dazugekommenen Streamer, der auch gesagt hat, in aller Spontanität, ich möchte dabei sein, ich möchte übertragen. Vor allem ganz, 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 ganz großes Dankeschön an Nürburgring Faszination, an Fabi, an Don Camillo, an Centurio, an Flücker TV, an A-Player, der sich auch spontan hingesetzt hat um 4 Uhr morgens. Danke an Charles. Danke an Big Mac, der durchgemacht hat. Danke an Otaku, der einst den gestreamt hat. Ähm, danke an jeden, der im Hintergrund mitgehostet hat, der spontan gemanagt hat, der geguckt hat, wie können wir weiter noch unterstützen, wie können wir helfen. Ähm, danke an Maxi, der gerade den Discord verlassen hat. <lacht> danke an Hydramix, der sich eigentlich angeboten hat, aber dann spontan doch keine Zeit hatte, weil äh, ihm die Sicherung rausgeflogen ist. Ähm, Danke an, 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 an Charles, dass, dass, dass du spontan gesagt hast, ey, ich, ich streame um 4 Uhr morgens, auch wenn ich eigentlich gar keinen Bock habe, ein Besseres zu tun habe. <lacht> Danke an wirklich jeden, der mit dabei war, der uns auf diesem Weg unterstützt hat. Und ich sage euch auch ganz ehrlich, ähm, auch wenn es scheiße viel Arbeit ist, Ich bin unglaublich froh, dass wir sowas auf die Beine stellen können. Deswegen hoffe ich, dass wir uns äh, in etwas weniger als einem Monat wiedersehen. Und zwar am 10.8. zum 9-Stunden-Rennen von Tsukuba mit Gruppe 4. Ähm ich hoffe mal, dass die Leute jetzt noch ihr Hack bekommen, welches sie bekommen sollten. Denn hier werden Donuts gemacht. Ento kommt dazu, Becker ist schon da, Casey ist da, Kaisi gesellt sich dazu. Das sind geisteskranke Aufnahmen, das sind geistes, geisteskranke Aufnahmen. Und ich sage euch eins, ich spiele jetzt noch im Hintergrund ein bisschen Musik ab, damit das hier richtig losgeht. Da haben wir nochmal ein bisschen Rennfieberstimmung, ein bisschen Celebration mit am Start. Ento raus mit euch. Komm, alle, die jetzt noch in der Lobby sind, holt die Autos raus, joint meine Ding noch mal kurz rein, dreht noch mal ein paar Donuts. Haut alles noch mal raus. 
Ich sage an der Stelle schon mal, danke fürs dabei sein. Bleibt gesund, lasst es euch gut gehen. Wir sehen uns am 10.8. nochmal wieder zum neuen Sturmrennen von Tsukuba, Gruppe 4. Bis dahin, bleibt gesund, lasst es euch gut gehen. Danke fürs dabei sein. Euer Flipsy. Macht's gut. Ciao.